All right, the big slide is slow. We're gonna fix it. All right, so right behind me is my 2004 Alpha C, a 38 foot diesel pusher. This isn't the gold, this isn't the Founder Series. This is just kind of the base model 2004 Alpha. Alphas are kind of a love it or hate it motorhome. Some people love them, some people hate them. I like mine, so you know, hey, it's what I got, we're gonna go with it. So, the slide out, the big slide, that big monster there is uh, slow, really slow coming in to the point where I give it a slight push and it walks itself right in. The slide out motor's getting weak. Goes out fine, but it's also got a little bit of gravity on the ramp to get it out. So, we're gonna replace the slide out motor. Now, this one does not have the center drive conversion, and I'm also not likely to do the center drive conversion just because time, money, I need to get this thing fixed. My house is sold, I'm living out of it. So, you know, we're gonna change the slide out motor and this really isn't that scary. I will show you exactly what it is. Now I've already started because I needed to know what I was getting into before I just started to, you know, hit the record button, but I'll show you what I've got and we'll go from there. So first you're gonna say, where the heck is the slide motor? The answer is right there. Behind that bump and that one right there are the two main racks that actuate the slide. Now this one does not have the center drive conversion, otherwise it would be in the, you guessed it, center. So this one is at the front rack. It's in the one behind the spare tire, the uh, left front tire. And I've kept all sorts of oils and stuff in there because I don't care if the bottles get particularly dirty. But we're going under, Oh boy. So you've got that little tub that is screwed into the ceiling. It feels like a thousand screws and it's more like about 10 Phillips head screws. I used my drill. I had to get rid of the little hose reel in there. I don't know why that was even there in the first place, but who knows? So here is the slide out motor. I'm gonna work on collecting the uh, part number off of it, which looks like it's up there. And it doesn't look like it's held in by that much. Okay, I'm going to adjust a little bit. Ooh, sorry. <clears throat> Doesn't look like there's really that much that holds this guy on. You've got kind of a clutch brake assembly there. You've got the motor itself. You got some of the supporting wiring. Anyways, I'm gonna look at this, collect the part number. Several days have passed and I got a box with ugh, beefy new slide out motor that came from Leisure Coach Works. Uh, I wanna say they're a division of Alpha Tears or formerly Alpha Tears. Doesn't really matter. Anyways, that's the motor we're gonna use. Now, things that are worth noting. Uh, turns out Alpha used two main styles of motors. They used a 90 RPM motor and a 30 RPM motor. The physical size and all the mounting locations and the shaft diameter and all the important parts, they're all the same. The only difference is how it's geared on the output. This is a 30 RPM unit. They came from the factory with 90 RPM units in 2004. Uh, talking with Leisure Coach Works, they said this will work just fine. It's just going to be a little slower. Seeing as the 90 RPM units are two to three months out, I can bolt this guy in and it'll work. The slide will be a little slower, but from what I understand, it will be more efficient because it's geared down a little further. So that's the explanation on that. I'm going to uh, start getting things disassembled and you're along for the ride. All right, I was forewarned that you have to be a contortionist to do this job. And holy crap, they weren't kidding. So what you've got is two screws. Why they didn't use a hex head, beyond me. You got a screw and a lock nut. It's just a Phillips head. Now the kicker is you see way up into that void up there? Yeah, there's two more just like that on top. And they didn't give me enough room to really get my hand in there. So I'm gonna do this. And you can see the bright beam of the flashlight. I'm gonna surgically remove a little bit more material. So that way I can get my hand in there and get those screws removed. After that, this should be pretty easy to do.
Okay, for anyone keeping score, the screws from the factory are Phillips and a 3 8 hex. Now just make sure that you don't drop your wrench way over the edge. Make sure you have something like a moving pad or something here to catch parts because ugh, I flung my wrench and it's way the heck over there. Not dead center of the motor home, but uh, for anyone that works on cars, that's exactly far enough away to be troublesome. Time to grab a magnet. All right, so I've now got access to the nose of the slide motor. That's the plate that goes on the front that kind of keeps things from getting caught in the gears. They pull a nasty, nasty trick on us. One, two, three. Instead of having one on each side, like the bottom, they trick you and put a third right in the middle. Now, as you can see, I opened up a modestly large hole so that way I could get my hand up there and uh, get at stuff. I'm going to make sure I throw some grease on that gear just because I can. And it looks like we got some, I want to say 7 16 if I had to guess, in place. I'll work on getting that off next. It's out. The electric ratchet, it was a 7 16 just so you know. The electric ratchet made quick work of that. Now there's, you can see the three mounting holes kind of where it was at. Make sure you do that back one first and then pick one of these front two to do last because otherwise you're reaching and the motor is heavy enough that you don't really want to drop it on your hand or any other part of your body. So just, you know, make sure you leave an easy one for last, oh goodness, and you're holding on to it so that way it doesn't drop and hurt yourself. Oh, other programming note, the wiring. Uh, I did talk to uh, Leisure Coachworks and they said just snip the wires because the motor has some long pigtails. I'll show you that in a minute when we get them inside. But uh, yeah, it's just a matter of snip those and reconnect them any which way you want. Solder, crimp, you name it. Pick your poison. I'm probably going to solder it because I got solder and heat shrink. I don't think I got butt connectors that big sitting around at the moment. Usually I do. Rare time where I don't. So we're going to go get this thing. Get that gear off, which is showing some wear. But new ones are like 145 bucks. So we're just going to do what we can. Run it. Keep it greased up. And it'll be happy. So I've put some thought into this. I'm going to replace the gear to put a new gear on the new motor. I'm going to keep this guy as a backup because when you look at it, I mean, that's pretty seriously worn down. You can go like that and you can see how much is really removed. But first, I need to get this guy off so that way I can make sure that I get everything correct to put on the new motor. So it's just got a pin. I'm going to knock that free. It's just driven into place, probably a you know, a small press fit, interference fit, but we're going to knock that out, take the gear off the old motor. The old motor is no good to me. Gear can still do me some good if I ever absolutely have to have one. So let's uh, get that pin out. Okay, here we are after a little bit longer. I got a new gear to replace the one that is basically worn to points. You can tell these two gears are similar, but they're not. This one has a uh, three-quarter inch tooth length and a five-eighths nut on the end. This one has a one-inch tooth length, which is just fine. It does not have the nut. Now, you can buy these with a nut machined on the end, but everywhere I look, they're back-ordered. And Leisure Coach Works will have the right one application-specific to fit what you're looking to do. So this one came from Leisure Coach Works. The ones with the nut on the end were back-ordered. The nut is so that way you can manually retract the slide by putting a wrench on it and spinning it. But, you know, there's a one inch piece of square tube that runs side to side under the slide. You can get on it with a big crescent wrench and just, you know, work it in slowly that way. So, we're going to get this gear, the new gear, onto the new motor. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the shaft, a little bit of grease on the pin, so that way in the event that I ever have to get, you know, these apart, they're going to come apart. I tried to knock the uh, cross pin out of this gear, but it was not having any of that, so it's kind of corroded together. So a little bit of grease is going to help make sure that these parts can come apart should I ever need them again. Anyways, 
let's get to pounding. Okay, the new gear is on. Let's talk about this for just a moment. Putting a straight edge across it, I've got the motors pretty well lined up across the face. Now, your eyeball might say, but that one's sticking way back. Yes, but look at where the gear is worn compared to that guy. So if we go like this and just lay the straight edge across it, you can pretty well see where the gear is going to mesh. You know, just laying it straight across, pretty well we can see that, uh, you know, straight across, we're in good shape, and we're just into the meat of the gear. So, I think we're in good shape. Let's go get this guy put back in. I'm going to find a couple of crimp connectors, because it's going to be a pain trying to solder those guys in there. I think that'd be the quickest, easiest way to go. So, we're going to put this guy back in, make sure everything aligns, and we're also going to put a lot of grease on this. Because we don't want metal to metal. Metal to metal is what does that. And frankly, I want this to last a little bit longer than, you know, that one. I don't want to have to do this again. Anyways, let's get things moving. Okay, as you can see, the motor's back in place. Yay! It's got the three-quarter 20 screws just up there. I've got the connectors uh, crimped together. These can be heat shrunk and you know shrink around the wire i'll do that in just a minute i want to make sure the slide's going to move before i go too much further i'm going to throw some grease on that just because i'm here and i mean we're going to grease it like like lots so you know insert appropriate analogy or inappropriate analogy if you so desire i'm not going to go there but uh yeah let's give this a try before I go too much further putting things together, I want to make sure the slide moves. All right, I just proved the slide goes in. Probably should have got that on video, but you believe me, don't you? Slide went in. I'm happy. And now I'm just going to get the last few things buttoned up. I've got some help from Harvey, the Golden Doesn't Retriever. Come up here, Harvey. There you are. Yep. Harvey, the Golden Doesn't Retriever. He's a retriever that doesn't retrieve if anyone's new to this channel. So, you know, that's the truth. So anyways, I'm going to get this buttoned up and uh, pet the dog for a minute because apparently that's what he needs. Hi. So anyways, thanks for watching. This was kind of a, a long project from the standpoint of I got the motor, got the, the old one out, found the gear was toast, got a new gear. I mean, it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm into this almost two weeks now. So, but, you know, for the sake of the video, it's only a handful of minutes. You know, aren't you lucky? Anyways, so we're just going to throw stuff back together, get the metal plate cover over the motor, which you can see right up there. It's happy. Now, keep in mind, this is the 30 RPM motor, not the 90 RPM motor. Uh, you know, it's only a little slower than the other one was. And I'm not sure if that's because the old one was worn or whatever, I don't have a new 90 RPM motor to compare to, plus I don't really want to take the time to compare the motors. Suffice it to say, what I've got will work just fine. Slide goes in, slide goes out. You know, when you're working with uh, motorhomes and stuff, you're never in a hurry, <laughs> you know. So, just gonna get this put back together. Thanks for watching, stay tuned. There'll be more RV adventures, as well as, uh, you know, uh, car content coming up. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.